Some time ago, I had the good fortune of being one of the first people to review the Forester by Work Tough Gear, designed by Alex at Aurora Borealis Knives. Well, now there's an updated version, Gen 2, of the Forester. If you're interested in seeing a comparison between these two knives, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, a couple of things. First, I just want to thank Vic at Work Tough Gear for sending out the new Forester so that I could share it with you. In fact, he sent out two versions of the Forester. This one is in Scandi, and the, another one that I'll be reviewing at a later time is in Sabre Grind. So thank you, Vic, for that. And the next thing is, I don't think I'll go through all the same tasks and skills I did with the original Forester. Um, I will be doing some, specifically feather sticking, of course. But the reason is, is if you really want to see all the things that the Forester is capable of doing, I recommend you go back and see that original video. The reason being is, these two knives are very close in design. There are a couple of differences though that I want to make you aware of. All right, what I'm going to do is bring the camera in a little closer, focus in on the knives. I'll be showing both of them side by side, talking briefly about the specifications because of course that'll all be in the video description and then I'll do one or two demonstrations with them. All right, just before we focus in on the knives itself, I thought I'd share with you the sheath that it came with. So it's one of Vic's normal, perfect Kydex creations that he likes to do. You'll notice that I don't have the belt carry on this one today because I switched it over to the one I actually have in my belt, which is the saber grind of the same knife. So that's the reason why there's no belt carry on this. I switched them back and forth. I only have so much belt clips. Anyway, let's just put the knife in so you can hear the thing snap into place. Of course, very, very secure, well molded it as usual. This one in a nice green color drain hole and all the attachment points you can possibly want. All right, let's just put the sheath out of the way and we'll focus in on the knives. I'll get my cheat sheet to give you the information. Of course, this will all be in the video description. Overall length from tip to pommel, 8.75 inches. Blade length, 4.25 inches. Blade thickness, is 0.149 of an inch or 3.8 millimeters. That compares differently with the original Forester, which was 3.5 millimeters or exactly one eighth of an inch. I'll talk more about that in a, in a minute. Height from edge to spine, 1.12 inches. And this knife came out in SK85. And that differs also from the uh, original Forester where it came out in K340. Knife weight though is eight ounces, 227 grams. With the sheath, 12.8 ounces, 364 grams. Now, I'll just give you a few close-ups on it, and I'll talk about some of the design changes to this knife over the other, and of course, then I'll do some comparisons between the two knives. So, to start with, it's still a Scandi grind, just like the original Forester is. Um, it's made, yes, it is made in a different steel, SK85, and that's not uncommon for Vic to do that, and Vic absolutely masters the heat treatment of SK85. It's, it's almost a super steel in performance. And uh, I, one of the things I wanted to show you is that this knife has thumb scallops. That's one of the things I commented on on my original review of the other knife is that I had wished it had thumb scallops because it makes it just so much more comfortable to hold here in the hand like this. I'm going to talk about the grip quite a bit in a moment. Other than that, it is a three color layered G10, which is great, hidden lanyard hole. You can see very, very much the same design between the two knives. Now the handle texture is one thing that's different. So let me bring in the original so you can see that. So it's going to be hard to be switching back and forth. So here's the original knife. Now, by the way, I put my own thumb scallops in. Got my Dremel tool out, put my own thumb scallops in. They're not quite as nice as the ones that Vic put on his, but they do function for me. I may make them just a little deeper to match the ones that are on the, the uh, new version of the knife. But handle shape is identical. In fact, you probably could switch the grips back and forth if you wanted to. But the thing that's different about the grips is this has what was called gator gripping. And it's just a, a checkering. And I understand that some people found that uncomfortable over time, gripping onto the knife. Uh, I don't. I, I never had an issue with it, but I can understand some people may find that uncomfortable if they're gripping it real hard. If it had been over the top, and around the bottom, yeah, I can see that being uncomfortable, but for me, it just provided good traction. I didn't have any complaint with that at all. No, it's, it's not, you know, I don't know, the difference in looks may be slightly different, but that's about the only difference between the two grips. So I'm just gonna bring the, the other one back in because it's not to say that the new one is slippery smooth. There is still traction on it. It is just much finer in nature, and that's the only difference. Otherwise, when you look at the knives, 
overall, the exact same grip. Now here is where the significant changes are and we're going to test this out because I'm not quite sure how they'll perform one against the other. I have done testing on both knives of course, but I haven't put one up against the other directly and that's what I'm going to be doing today. So there is a difference in the thickness of the spine. This is the Gen 2, this is the Gen 1. You can see that thickness when I show them side by side. I didn't notice it right away until I held up the original against the new version, but the Gen 2 is definitely thicker. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but you can see that there. Another difference is, now this is minor again, some people prefer this. You'll notice there's no sharpening choil right here at the where the ricasso and the blade meet. Some people prefer sharpening choil. I've never seen it as an issue. It's a nice thing to have. The new version has a sharpening choil, just a tiny one. It just helps keep that little slope from developing as you sharpen your knives over time. And that's I think that's more of an aesthetic than it is a functional thing. But there is another difference. I want you to look at the primary grind for the Scandi. And on the top I have Gen 2 and on the bottom I have Gen 1. The one on the bottom, the Gen 1, has a higher Scandi grind than it does on the Gen 2. Now both of them have micro bevels, secondary bevels, which are polished and slightly uh, rounded on the edges or slightly convexed. So that's done for strength. But I asked Alex why the change between the two knives and I don't know that there was any issues in usage but Vic decided he was wanted to go with a slightly thicker steel and a slightly lower grind on the Gen 2 for strength just to protect the edge. Honestly I don't see it myself and uh, you know it could have a negative impact on the carving ability of these two knives. The thicker the blade and the lower the grind on the, this blade may actually affect its carving ability. Now that yet to, remains to be seen. I've done some carving with it. It carves very well but I want to do it both on the same sticks, or same stick, yeah, switching back and forth. All right, I think I've shown enough about the two knives. Let's do exactly that. Let me just split out a couple of uh, lengths of wood that I can do some feather sticking with. All right, the wood that I'm working with is a piece of maple that I just cut down. I'm hoping it's going to be good. This is the lower section of that maple. And uh, the hopper section was a little punky, but this looks nice and solid. So, well, we're going to have a look and see how well this works out. So, there is my baton, another piece of the same tree with a big knot in it. And I will baton this down. So, I don't expect, well, I know I've already used it. I don't expect any issues with batoning this through. If anything, it was easier than the, the original, only because it's thicker, you know, and, and a Scandi, oh my. <laughs> There's gonna be some work in here trying to find a good piece of wood to choose from. All right, that's the thickest piece that I'm gonna baton today. So now I'm gonna just take this. This was, what is it? Two and a half, 14, two and a half in diameter, 14 inches in length, maybe even 15 inches in length. I'm gonna split a number of lengths out of this and uh, I'm gonna go right to feather sticking with it. All right, I went through the splits I got off of that length of wood, trying to find one with the least amount of pinholes in it from little branches over time. Actually, some of it would be insects as well, it looks like so. This is the one that I'm gonna use. First thing I'm gonna do is take off some of that heartwood. And that came off easy enough. All right, I'm gonna start with the Gen 2 to see what kind of uh, curls I can create with this. And then I'll move on to a comparison with the Gen 1. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. A little thicker, but just getting started here. So what my concern was with this is that because it is a thicker piece of steel and the grind is not as high, the primary grind, the Scandi grind itself, that I would have to lift it more before it would bite. And when you do that, it wants to bite in even deeper and that's where often you get these thicker curls. But just the same, the knife is doing the fine curls, but the truth will be when I compare one against the other. Actually, it's doing really well. I don't know what I'm worried about. 
Yeah, it's doing all right. Now let's just get rid of that. Works well on chest lever. I got to tell you, that makes a difference. I got to come back and talk about these grips in a minute, but what a difference that makes. Let me pick up the original generation, the original Forester, and see what we can do here. Hmm. Well, this is interesting. That one's a bit too thick. I think that was my fault. Trying to give it the lightest touch. Running it down the ridges. Actually, I'm not getting this. Oh, there we go. All right, the thin ones. That's what I was looking to say. I was able to get the thicker ones with the other knife, but how about the thin ones? Here we go. That's a bit better. Hmm. I wonder if it's the wood as I dig in further. There we go. There's some thin ones happening. Chest lever. All right. Okay. I could go on and on doing more and more uh, feathers. Let me just do a few more feathers with the original on a nice edge like this. There's a knot here is where these bouncing off at. Well, let's go back to the other one. Yeah, there is a difference. Interesting that I'm getting finer curls off of the new knife. Turn it around, go down the other way, the way it was originally. All right, um, they both feather. What else can I say? All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this video up, but I have a few more comments about the two knives and especially their handles. I've mentioned that a few times, so let's just talk about their handles. All right, what I wanna do is just talk for a moment about the performance. These two knives, one compared against the other. And the first thing I wanna say about the Gen 2 Forester is, I was surprised. It actually did a better job of creating feathers on a piece of wood than I thought it would. Now, there's no reason why it wouldn't create good feathers. I guess the comparison was is I didn't think it would do as well a job creating feathers as the original. Again, because of that higher or the lower grind, if you will, and thicker stock on the Gen 2. It really should not feather as well, um, but I could. Now, there was a difference in the performance and the way I had to hold them. The Gen 1, I was able to lower my wrist a little bit, lower the blade to the wood a little bit, get longer curls on it, and uh, that's one style of, of working with it. Now, here, here's the truth of it. The longer you spend with any one knife, the better off you get with it. When you start switching back and forth from knives, you have to start switching your technique up a little bit. However, when I used the Gen 2, I was actually able to get finer curls, little bugles, the little tiny curls, the type that would take a spark from a ferrous cerium rod much easier than the larger one would. That actually surprised me. It is, may not give me the longer curls, and I think that had to do with the fact that I kept having to raise the back of the knife off of the wood before I would get the bite. And have I practiced with this even longer? There's no reason why I couldn't get longer curls because I get more used to knowing or feeling the feel is, is more like what it is of when the edge is actually going to start to bite into the wood. So truth is, they're both capable performers as far as feather sticking scope. Now, everything else is identical. Scraping techniques, notching techniques, everything is the same between these two knives. So you, you won't notice any difference whatsoever. My concern was the very, very fine work of feathering. And honestly, I think at this point in time, I'm going to stay with the secondary or the Gen 2 one because I just, maybe it was easier to get used to. I'm not quite sure why. All right, I also mentioned I wanted to talk about the grips on these knives. I'm just going to focus in on the Gen 2 because that's the one you're going to buy if any of these things. So 
This knife design, of course, by Alex at Aurora Borealis Knives, is intended to be a bushcraft knife. Now, the handle on a bushcraft knife has very specific requirements. It's not a big chopper. It's not a handle that has to hold into your hand no matter how much force you give it, how much centrifugal force, something that won't slide out of your hand and away from your body. That's not what a bushcraft knife is all about. A bushcraft knife handle should be comfortable in every possible grip that you are likely to use it for. So if I'm holding it in the straightforward grip like this, if I'm holding it upside down like this, if I'm holding it in reverse grip, if I'm holding it in this grip, it should be the same regardless. Every time you shouldn't feel any need to adjust your hand comfortable all the way around. And as a result, in order to get that type of grip, I mean, think Puko, think old style Puko. The handles on those knives were basically very simple elliptical barrels. That's what they were more or less. And that's pretty close to what this is in many ways. It's not slab sided. There is some slight swell in the palm area, both through here and through here, but not a lot. A little bit narrowing here, a little bit narrowing at the top as well. No pronounced beak on the, on the pommel of it. And that's what makes all the difference. It's just a nice rounded pommel. So when you're working, if you're drilling, then that's gonna feel comfortable in your hand. If you're holding it in this grip, same thing, same thing. Comfortable all the way around. Very predictable and very comfortable. And just enough indexing so that you know where your hand is on the knife at all times. I know some people say there's not much of a guard there. This is not a stabbing knife. It's not a chopping knife. The design is for bushcraft. So that type of a handle will go a lot farther than any of the other styles out there. Some of them are very comfortable to hold on to in one grip only. This is comfortable to hold on to in every conceivable grip that I would want to use it in. So that's what I just put out there about this design. This is one of the things about Alex's design that is so spot on. He knows bushcraft knives. And well, he lives in the boreal forest in Quebec, Canada, so he knows all about the boreal forest and that's where this type of knife shines. Yes, axes are also great. Big knives do have a place and Alex has some amazing big knives, but this is the one you want for carving. It's a smaller knife like this. Still plenty heavy duty for all the tasks you want to do with, uh, do with it, like splitting wood or anything else. That thickness may work against you in super fine carving, but the tip is still precise enough and thin enough that I can carve inside curves on spoons or anything else, maybe not as well as a dedicated carving knife, but still very, very capable for sure. Okay, as I mentioned, very minimal demonstrations with this knife because it is so similar to the original design. Uh, differences, changes in the design. Some people will say they're improvements. Some people will say they're not. Honestly, um, I can live with either design, the handles and everything else. I was, and again, I just have to say this. I'm more impressed than I thought I would be with the carving ability of the new version. Okay. What I'm going to be doing in a future video is comparing this one against the Sabre because they're otherwise exactly the same profile, same handle, same blade shape, but one has Scandi and the other has a high saber. All right, look forward to that video. If you have any comments or questions, put them in the comments section below. As I mentioned, the specifications and the links to where you can take another look at this. Oh, by the way, and this is something I just want to point out, especially for Canadians watching this video. There is a Canadian distributor of Work Tough Gear knives, and the nice thing is he's right here in Nova Scotia. It's Wild Coast Camping, and of course I'll put the link to that. There's also a link for a European distributor and a couple of American distributors. This is outside of being buying it directly from Work Tough Gear. That's always been one of the complaints is that they're always out of stock at Work Tough Gear. They do sell fast, there's no question. That kind of is an indication of just how popular they are, but there are, that's at least four outside distributors that you can turn to if it's not in stock at Work Tough Gear. All right, that's everything I have for you. Get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.